Welcome back everyone, my name is Sarah. Sorry it's been a couple of days since I actually made a video, I've been really busy with school, got some food poisoning a couple of days ago, stay away from the seafood, that's all I'm saying. But anyways, I'm back now and in this video I'm going to be talking about enzymes and biochemical reactions. Cells are constantly engaged in chemical activity, and the major difference between living things and non-living things is that living things carry out chemical activities on a continuous and controlled basis. If this wasn't the case, we would not be alive because most of the reactions that happen within a cell are really freaking slow. But living things have these things called enzymes, and enzymes are biological catalysts. A catalyst is a molecule that can change the rate of reaction, but is not consumed in the process. And catalysts do this by lowering what is called the energy of activation. In chemical systems, the amount of energy that is available to a reaction is called the free energy, also known as delta G, which stands for Gibbs free energy, blah, 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 blah. Normally, you have your reactants are going to be at higher energy than your products and things like to be at lower energy they like to have as little energy as possible so during a chemical reaction you're going to have your reactants they've got to cross this energy barrier called the energy of activation but once they cross this barrier they're going to be transformed into products and they're nice and happy Normally the energy of activation without a catalyst is going to be pretty large, you can see here. But the energy of activation with a catalyst is much, much smaller. So it's a lot easier for reactants to be converted into products. Enzymes are normally composed of one or more polypeptide chains. This means they are normally proteins. However, there are some RNA molecules that act as catalysts. Anyways, the basic structure of an enzyme is you've got your binding site, you've got your enzyme here, you've got the binding site there, and then you've got the active site. What's going to happen is you have your substrate, which is your reactant. Substrate is going to come in and bind at the in the binding site. Once the substrate binds, the enzyme is going to change its configuration. It's going to change its shape. The substrate is then going to be pushed back into the active site where it is going to be changed into the product. Product is going to be released and then the enzyme changes back to its original shape. The enzyme has not been changed at all. Some enzymes or some reactions require something that is called a coenzyme. These are also known as vitamins, like vitamin A or vitamin D or something like that. But that doesn't really matter. I don't know why I mentioned it. I'm sorry. Sometimes when I don't have enough caffeine, I tend to get a little scatterbrained. Anyways, moving on to the specificity of enzymes. There are a couple of different theories on the specificity of enzymes. The first is the lock and key mod. This means there's one enzyme, one substrate. It's exactly like a padlock and a key. There's only one key that opens each padlock. The induced fit theory states that the active site allows for some change in shape to fit the substrate. So, say the substrate has a slightly different shape than what the enzyme is used to. It's kind of like a lock pick. You can always, you know, it takes a minute, but you can you can pick a lock as long as you have something that looks kind of like the key that you're using. And there are also a couple of things that affect the actual enzyme function. There is temperature, which is the rate at which molecules move. Kinetic energy, it's a measure of kinetic, kinetic energy. pH is the concentration of hydrogen ions. These two things, when altered, can disrupt the sh actual shape of the protein, protein folding. You've got substrate analogs. These are molecules that look really, really, really similar to the actual substrate, but may have some different chemical properties. They might bind too tightly to the active site and 
will be unable, like the enzyme is actually unable to release this analog, so the enzyme is enzyme is rendered useless. And you also have these things called allosteric effectors. These are molecules that bind somewhere else on the enzyme and change the shape of the enzyme. So you can see we have our enzyme here, substrate here, binding site. You've also got this thing called the allosteric site. So you have this little allosteric effector. It can come in and bind to this allosteric site and it's going to change the shape of the enzyme. Therefore, the enzyme is not going to be able to bind this substrate. The enzyme is not going to work temporarily. Whenever this allosteric effector unbinds, the enzyme comes back to its original shape and then it can bind the substrate. But that's all I have for enzymes.